Hey guys, what's up? Let's face it, if you're new to programming, you'll make mistakes. In fact, you'll make a lot of mistakes. The situation gets even more complicated if you're a self-taught programmer and you're feeling your way around with little or no guidance. Then you'll make a ton of mistakes. In this video, we take a look at the top 5 programming mistakes beginners will make and show you how to solve them. Mistake number one. Setting up your programming environment. It's important for beginners to choose a language that is hassle-free and has a good documentation and all of that to avoid spending hours setting up and then coming to the realization that you can't write one damn thing because the whole setup was wrong in the first place to begin with. This is so bad that most would-be programmers get turned off and normally never return because they're saying if the setting up the programming environment is this difficult, can you imagine when we start to code? Are some just mistakes setting up the environment, the programming environment for actually coding itself? Mistake number two, misconceptions. Before I started to program, I was told that computer science was for math wizards. Having not been able to pass calculus, Matt's evil twin, or fall in love with algebra, Matt's ugly sister, I thought I was doomed to a life of using other people's programs. But this is definitely a misconception. It's possible today to learn a lot of programming languages but and not be a math wizard. It's all about choosing the right language to start with, and most beginners make that mistake they just believe that it's not for them and some of them don't even go on to make the rest of mistakes because they never ever start mistake number three the computer knows what you want this is a typical mistake when moving from being a consumer of software to a producer of software when we consume software we assume that the, pro the computer is way smarter than it is but guess what the computer is literal most newbies have to come to the understanding that computers take each instruction literally and doesn't understand intent or hidden meanings actions must be specified in steps and stages so when persons get to the part where they start to program they don't know how to break down complex action into stages and to write these stages down into instructions that the computer can understand and execute. When persons are actually um, consumers, they have a ready-made program that somebody taught out the stages of how to, to get it to work and all they have to do is really push buttons. But when you become a programmer, most of them don't understand that they're now the person who is have to think through these stages and get the computer to execute it so that someone else can press that button and get the program working. So this is a typical mistake. The computer is literal. It will take whatever you write very literal. Another main programming mistake newcomers normally make is inconsistent formatting. That's where somebody starts off naming a variable capital C-A-T-S and then relates to that same variable as lowercase C-A-T-S. In some programming languages that is not allowed. There's strong strong emphasis on naming conventions and keeping your variables named the same way and in others you are able to change the, the you have a lot more flexibility and it's in those languages that we see newcomers 
continuously making these errors and making it very very complicated for someone to follow their code and to understand what they were trying to do in their program so that is one of the main things so if you're a newcomer even if your language is not a strongly typed language you still should try to keep one convention in terms of having your 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 variables your functions having one consistent style throughout your program and not to mix um, lowercase letters and uppercase letters even if your programming language doesn't care because you there are some of them that really it's not an issue you know but in other languages especially if you're going to go on to write multiple language and there's no programmer I actually know that only wants to know one and one language only most persons want to do at least about three or four different languages to get a well-rounded programming experience so if you're going to be moving off into languages it is very important or moving off into different languages is very important to have a consistent style of writing not to mix lowercase and uppercase letters unless you're doing something like some camel casing kind of situation but if you are going to name something let's for instance as i gave in that example lowercase c a t s and then you're going to refer back to that thing as uppercase C A T S in most cases you are going to run into problems in fact I'm trying to even think of languages that will allow you to change the name of variables like that not coming to mind as of this recording but if there is please leave it in the comment section but as but the, the point here is not my example the point here is to be consistent in terms of how you write your program not to start off with a particular style and then deviate as you go along in your program because maybe you're writing this program over a course of like let's just say couple months or days and you feel a different way towards the program in the middle or the end no try to remember or keep a consistent way of writing it makes it easier for you to follow and to remember what you wrote or what you intended and it makes it also easier for the person checking your code to understand what you are trying to do and it also stops you from having misery and a harder time grasping other languages that will definitely be strongly typed and definitely insist that you have a specific way of laying out your functions your variables and stuff like that yet another mistake that new programmers make is making giant functions yes you know giant functions that are functions that are so huge and so complicated it does so much that you don't even remember what it was initially created to do we've all been guilty of that when we we we, we just started out and most key in most cases is not that you intended to make a giant function that's a function that surpasses 50 lines which is the recommended number of lines for any function but it's a situation where you wanted to a particular action to be done but while wanting the function to carry out a particular action you wanted it to carry out another action and another action and yet another action until you overloaded that function as in you just put in everything you possibly wanted the whole program to do in one single function which makes this function huge and unable to maintain or you're unable to maintain this function or even remember what it was created originally to do that's a huge function and sometimes it's very difficult in most cases it's very difficult to debug and it can even in some languages cause your program to eventually crash 
or have long wait and load times because that giant function so it's recommended that when you create functions you should have 50 lines or less it's up to you and to have other functions don't have one giant function doing the entire program it's very difficult to maintain and it's in some cases hard to to understand and it actually shows your inexperience because it's a mistake that most beginners make when they just start out I have made that mistake before I must admit I have had programs when I just started Python that are so functions I mean but that are so huge I don't remember what it was supposed to do and it I just couldn't debug it so when when people say keep your functions short and simple and you know to the point it makes sense so please avoid making those giant functions and you know you know when a function is really big it's doing multiple things it's doing let's just say it's doing more than 20 things and it's just one single function split up your your um, activities into separate separate function and I'm using the term activities because uh, nothing else is coming to mind right now but break them up into separate functions that can interact with each other and pass on information instead of having that giant mutant function sucking the life out of your program so that is a mistake as a newcomer you should try your very best to avoid break your functions up keep away from that one ring to rule them all function uh, so that's my three cents on this particular issue all right guys thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment under the comment section and tell us if we missed any mistake that is common that you know of and we just didn't remember to put it there and subscribe if you like once again thanks for watching